down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. you all know why we're here, to welcome the newest citizens in our happy little valley, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Tuttle. Let's hear it. Folks, we just want to say that the happiest moment of our lives is when we discovered this happy little valley where everybody is happy. <laughs> Be sure that we are happy to settle down and be happy with you. Right, Momo? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, we just love being happy. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, now for the big announcement of the day. Mr. and Mrs. Tuttle moving in here has put Greater Hooterville over the top. As you all know, 250 citizens or more entitles the community to be represented on the county board of supervisors. Henry and Wilma have put us right up there with a comfortable margin of 251. Oh. Don't get up, Sam. Oh, don't be silly. You must be tuckered out. Now, here, rest up against the tree. It's real relaxing. Thank you. It's the best picnic we ever had. Mm. Nice couple, the Tuttles. Hmm? Yeah, very nice. Especially since they're getting us our own member on the Board of Supervisors. Uh, what do you think it'll be? Hey, that's right. We have to hold a special election. Well, not right this minute, I hope. Well, no, but it's never too soon to start thinking about something as important as that. Ah, there's Joel, Charlie, Newt Kyle. Ben Miller? Harlan Fergus? Sam, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm thinking of possible candidates. We've got to have somebody brainy and reliable. Help me think, Kate. Okay, if that's your idea of what to do on a picnic. <laughs> uh, I got one. Who? Almira Peabody. Almira Peabody? The school teacher. I know who she is, Kate. Well, what's wrong? Well, she's a woman. Well, what's that got to do with it? She's brainy and reliable. I think she'd make a good candidate. Well, as a candidate, a woman would be all right, I suppose. But the danger is she might win. <laughs> what of it? Well, Kate, you know as well as I do, a supervisor is a responsible position. They run the county. And a woman couldn't do that. Well... Yeah, I <laughs> And, uh... Women don't have the experience, in worldly matters, that is. That's right. It's a jungle out there, Kate, a jungle. <laughs> no place for a frail little pussy cat. No place at all. You know something, Kate? For a female, you do some very sound thinking. Oh, uh, hogwash. <laughs> How's that? You didn't think I meant all those ridiculous things I said about women? Well, didn't you? Of course, of course not. not. Sam makes real good sense. I say he's adulpated. That's because you're a woman. Well, you're nothing more than a man. Men are a lot smarter than women. Well, they are not. Get it out. We were just having a, a happy Hooterville discussion. We have them all the time, don't we? Oh, no. <laughs> Sam, we're all set. 
have to make our move. Hey, Joe, how do you spell abject? Uh, how are you using it? In a sentence. I mean, in what way? Oh, like in abject apology. Who are you apologizing to? Joe, do you have to know everything I do? <laughs> Don't answer that. You do, and you won't rest till you find out. Well, I'm just finishing a letter of apology to Kate. Well, you do whatever you want. But why I'm here is to announce to you that I'm going to be your campaign manager when you run for the county board of supervisors. Well, I'm not running for any office. Sam, you can't miss. I got your campaign issues all figured out. First, we'll get them with a missile gap. Joe, that's no issue for the folks around here. We don't have any missiles in the valley. See, the gap's bigger than you think. Then we'll get them with a smog issue. We don't have any smog. That's just the point. Why wait until the last minute? Then on the race to the moon. Race to the moon? You don't want to go? <laughs> Joe, save your breath. I'm not running. Humble. With humble apologies. And to make this even more effective, I've got to deliver it in person to Kate. It's, uh, it's almost closing time anyway. Hey, Sam. Would the fact that we're having ham, hocks, and beans for dinner have anything to do with you delivering the note in person? <laughs> oh, just a happy coincidence. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Uh, Kate, uh, about yesterday, I, uh, oh, well, uh, a dog on it. Here. Kate! 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 It's all set. I called an emergency meeting of the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club, and we voted unanimously to back you in running for the County Board of Supervisors. Me? Why me? I tried to railroad myself through, I mean, I, uh, I offered my services, but I was turned down, darn it. So I agreed to be your campaign manager. And we do need a woman in that job. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tell me one constructive thing you men have done in this valley. <laughs> That's a laugh. Now, wait a minute, Uncle Joe. Selma has a point there. You would like to know one constructive thing that the men have done for this valley? Yes, I'd like to know. You tell him, Sam. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, well, I was in charge of the committee that uh, pushed through a no-smoking sign for the bus depot. How'd it work out? Well, that's beside the point. Oh, I know how it worked out. Uncle Joe was nailing up the no-smoking sign. He put down his cigar and burned down the bus depot. <laughs> and all down the line, you men in this valley have batted a big, fat zero. That's why we're running a woman for the County Board of Supervisors. Oh, now, just a minute. Let's don't make Hooterville ridiculous. <laughs> what do you mean by that? He means that if we had a woman representing us, we'd be the laughing stock of the country. Oh, we would, would we? Selma, I accept the nomination. Good girl. Let's go. And Joe, I accept the nomination. And as for the apology... <laughs> Boy, we sure showed them. Yeah, we showed them. Only one thing, uh, my timing was bad. Timing? I think I blew the ham hocks and beans. <laughs> Fresh right over, Sam. What is it you want? You know, I'm pretty busy campaigning. I don't have much time for you candidates. Well, that's just it, Joe. I'm not a candidate. I'm backing out. You're what? Well, I can't help it. I don't want to be mad at Kate, and I don't want her to be mad at me. Oh, that's my stuff. No, it ain't. It's practical business sense. What do you mean? You know how many women have been in here to shop since this thing started? None. There you one. That's right. Of course, I know they'll be back when they find out I'm not campaigning. Or I'm not, am I? <laughs> that's Steve Elliott, making you immortal in smoke. You mean that's Steve Elliott sending my business up in smoke? <laughs> Sam, I'm surprised at you. Where's your courage? A man's never down until he's bankrupt. Joe, don't even say that word. <laughs> What's the uh, good word? We were watching your sky riding. Oh, yeah? Great day for it. No wind. That ought to stay a long time. Hey, speaking of nice weather, when are we going to have another picnic? 
You can turn on my mother and still talk about picnics? I didn't turn on your mother. That was a job your uncle hired me to do. Come on, Billy Joe, you understand. Oh, don't you touch me. Well, you understand, don't you, Bobby Joe? Oh. Well, aren't you going to stop off, too? You aren't even going to try to grab me? How insulting can you get? Drop out of the campaign? You'll do no such thing. But Selma, Sam is my best friend. Just a minute. You're a woman first and a friend later. <laughs> That's another thing. Aren't we going too far with that slogan, woman power? Not a bit. It says it all. <laughs> I still don't like it. What we're doing to Sam? Boycott in his store. I don't even know if it's legal. We might all wind up in state prison. They'd have to prove it first. And even then, they couldn't send us to state prison. Mm. It's a federal offense. <laughs> You're such a comfort. Huh? What did I tell you? Here comes the enemy now, crawling for forgiveness. Well, are you ready to admit defeat? We ain't admitting nothing. In fact, we're here just to warn you, women, that we're putting Plan B into effect. Oh. Well, wait a minute, Thelma. What is it you want from us? Well, we're willing to be big-hearted about it. Let bygones be bygones. If you'll sign a paper saying there's no place for women in politics, and you are stupid to think about it. Uh, Kate, if we could talk this over ourselves... Well, of course, then. Uh, watch him, Kate. I know how men are. I married one once. Poor sucker. Well, that gives me a great idea. We'll wage this battle in his memory. Oh, can't you see I'm trying to have a peace talk? Well, go ahead, but don't make up with her. <laughs> Kate, we're old friends, and, and you know I've got your best interests at heart. Oh, I know, Sam, and I feel the same. Good. And you've made your point. I have? Well, sure, anyone can see you're doing real good. Probably get quite a handful of votes. A handful? Uh, yeah, a big handful. Why, any number of uninformed women had probably be... Oh, I slipped in a bad word there, didn't I? Yes, you did. Well, forget I said it, Kate. All I meant was, there are a lot of women who vote for you because they like you. Not realize how silly it'd be to have a woman for supervisor. What? Silly. Oh, golly, I sneaked in another bad word, didn't I? Yes, you did, and I suggest you sneak out while you're still all in one piece. <laughs> Here you are, Roy. So, Sam Drecker for Board of Supervisors. We can count on you, can't we, Roy? I don't know, Joe. My wife and I have had the biggest fight of our married life over this election. She says if I don't agree to vote for Kate Bradley, she's going to make me sleep in the barn. Those are only threats. Stand your ground, Roy. Stand your ground. <laughs> Oh, go away. Go away. Do you mean you're considering voting for Sam Drucker instead of Kate Bradley? No, Selma, Emily has the right to her own free choice. Nonsense, Kate. We women must stand united in this struggle. Well, personally, I am all for Kate, but... Uh... Ernest, my husband, he says if I even think of voting for him, he'll cut all my hair off. Oh, yeah. Well, don't you give in. Cut off your hair. Why, he wouldn't dare. And you can tell him Selma Park said so personally. catching on like a prairie fire. Yeah, I'm glad somebody thinks so. I don't think I know. I conducted a scientific poll, and if projected over the whole valley, you're in by a landslide. No kidding. Uh, how many people did you survey? Two. <laughs> Two? Well, who were they? Charlie and Floyd. <laughs> What's the matter? Did it ever occur to you they're both members of the same sex, namely men? And did it ever occur to you that there's a whole other sex, namely women? 
Oh, them. <laughs> they are them. And it just so happens there are many of them in the valley as there are of us. And if all the women vote for Kate and all the men vote for me, we're going to have a deadlock into the next century. Not necessarily. You know who's coming out there? That new woman, Mrs. Tuttle. So? Don't you see? Him being a man, we can count on his vote. But if we can sweet talk her into our side, we'll have a majority. Well, what do we do? I'll turn on the old Carson charm, and you turn on the old Drucker. Well, you sit back and be as pleasant as you can. <laughs> Good morrow, dear lady. Good morrow. And how are we this morning? Oh, just fine. No need to ask. From the blush on your cheeks and the rose on your lips. No, for crying out loud. <laughs> Fill this, my man. And how is your charming new home? Uh, just fine. Ah, yes. How else could a home of yours be? But a cozy nook nestled neath a bower of roses, crying out a welcome to the weary traveler. <laughs> and how are your spirits? Oh, just fine. But how else could they be? What spirits in such loveliness could soar but to the very skies? We should turn off that Carson charm. Makes my eyes smart. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Tuttle? Just fine. No, ma'am, I mean anything else in the way of groceries. Oh, uh, a dozen oranges. All right. Three, six, nine, and twelve. There you are. That's what we call a drucker's dozen. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, two cans of pork and beans. You're in luck, Mr. Tuttle. I got a special on pork and beans today. Two cans per quarter. <laughs> and for all the new residents of the valley, we have a special special on four cans per quarter. That's very sweet of you. I don't know how you can afford it. Well, we just mark it off to goodwill. Yeah, I'm going broke, but boy, do I have goodwill. <laughs> all we ask of you, Mrs. Tuttle, is that when you vote for the County Board of Supervisors, you remember the name Sam Drucker. Oh, I'll remember you, Mr. Drucker. Oh, no. He's Drucker. Oh. oh well, you're nice, too. Thanks. Sam Drucker. I'll remember that name for sure. Oh, Mr. Tuttle, did you register so you'll be able to vote? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, sign her up, Sam. Well, I haven't got the registration book. You took it down to the Shady Rest. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we'll stop by there on your way home and take care of that. Right this way, my dear lady. Would you like some more homemade divinity while you're signing? I don't know. It's uh, full of calories. Oh, go ahead. Be naughty. I will. I'll get it. <laughs> that did sign right then. That's a good boy. Now, who are you going to vote for? Kate Bradley. <laughs> I demand a recount. This is a fix. Well, why would you say a thing like that? Would they want a recount when I vote for that? Uh, what was his name? Sam Drucker. Oh, Sam Drucker. Oh, Henry. He was the nicest man. You can't imagine what good bargains he gave me. Aha! Bribery, eh? Oh, wait until I report this to the authorities. They'll send you so far up the river you'll spawn. Quiet, or I'll tell the truth about your family tree. They lived in one. Oh, I'll match my family tree with yours any time. It's a deal. But when you bring your tree over, don't forget to park your baboons on the porch. Oh, they jar slopped out all the time. Uh, Henry, uh, I think we'd better be going. Yes, dear. Yeah. Well, I'll open the door for you. I'll have you know that my ancestors were in King James Court. Yeah, well, if they'd obeyed the law, they wouldn't have had to go to court. Oh, <laughs> very nice of you to, uh, to come and, and 
Please come back soon. Bye-bye. And don't forget, I have friends in high places. Oh, so we're back to the baboons again. <laughs> That's what it means. The door's locked and I ain't open for business. So why? Well, what business would I stay open for? Well, that's ridiculous, Sam. Why, every woman in the valley comes here. No more, huh? That old doorknob hasn't felt a female touch since this whole thing started. <laughs> Sam, I'm sorry. You're sorry. You ought to hear my creditors sob. <laughs> this whole thing's gone too far, you see. Friend against friend, family divided. I'm gonna back out. Or on your own? Well, I don't need to have anyone tell me whether I should run or not. What about Boss Plout? Yes, Emma. That's the only Boss Plout I know of. Well, what does she got to say about what I do? Well, you don't think Selma's going to let her big moment fizzle out without a battle? Why, this fighting and gouging is a staff of life to Selma. And Joe's no better. If I dropped out, he'd just get somebody else to take my place. All right, what are we going to do? Well, there's not much we can do but see it through. But I sure appreciate your coming over and being friendly about it. Sam, I couldn't really feel any other way about you. <laughs> Is it all right if we wait in here for Andy Parker's jitney? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Tuttle. Well, sure. Are you taking a trip? A permanent one. You mean you're moving out of the valley? I'm afraid the valley has been a big disappointment. A big disappointment. Uh, we were looking for a happy valley, and this one isn't happy at all. Not happy at all. Everybody fights, and that's not happy. So we're moving to Crabwell Corners, because their chamber of commerce over there said that their town was very happy. Crabwell Corners? <laughs> you're going to Crab... Henry, how can a place with the name Crab in it be happy? <laughs> We have to take the Chamber of Commerce's word for it, dear. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's how. Uh, uh, there's Mr. Parker now to drive us over. Uh, bye. 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 Oh, I, I'm so sorry you people weren't happy. <laughs> They're gone. Oh, what are you cheering about, Kate? We just lost our two newest citizens. Well, without them, we fall under the 250 mark. And without that, we don't get to have our own supervisor. Hooray! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, what's the matter? Oh, oh boy, I, I think I just sprained my wrist. Maybe even broke it. Oh, I don't think it's that bad. Just let Doc Stewart have a look at it. Oh, I just remembered he's away. For three weeks. What am I going to do? Well, don't panic. He left the doctor in charge. He did? Sure. I have a card right here. Well, hurry up, Kate. This thing's beginning to swell. Something awful. Yeah. Here it is. Dr. Margaret Smith. Oh, that's wonderful. Margaret? Oh, with that name, it could be a woman doctor. So? Well, Kate, if you think for one moment I'm going to go to a woman doctor, if I was on my deathbed, I wouldn't let a woman... <laughs> One in the valley. Here, have a campaign weenie with my compliments. <laughs> Jump 
function.